All right, everybody, welcome to Team Team Java Bean. This is the, um, we are working, we put together a wonderful little game that we like to call Monster Bash. Um, and I uh, figure that we will show it off to you today. So, Mike. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Mike uh, Butkerite. Um, I come to DevPen from a background in education. I was a middle school math teacher for five years and a couple of years working in administration as a vice principal. Um, I got my BA in mathematics and my master's in education from Delphi University in New York. And hello, my name is Vishnu Nambudharipad. Um, before this, I was working as an um, in AmeriCorps Vista service. Uh, I also taught abroad for a while and I was doing environmental work. Uh, I got my degree from the University of Minnesota um, with a BA in Biology Society and Environment. And my name is Zachary Jeffcoat. I graduated from Appalachian State in 2012 with a degree in a Bachelor of Art in Global Studies and Cultures, European Focus. Uh, I have a work history. I was at Target before this, and then prior to that, I was at uh, Pizza Ranch. So, about our project. As I said, we created a game called Monster Bash. Monster Bash is a stats-based arena simulation wherein a, uh, a player can select a monster and a weapon or armor to equip that monster with uh, based on the equipment and monster that they select, they will be able to um, they'll be able to uh, do uh, get the elements and affinities to work that way. And then uh, each monster has an element which interacts with the location to determine whether or not it gets a boost. Same with the equipment, which has an affinity which will interact with the weather that is given. Uh, this will cause the stats to increase and increases the power chances, the chances of the power overwhelming the other monster. As an unauthenticated user, you cannot, uh, as an unauthenticated user, you can play a battle, but that's it. It just kind of goes, it does the thing, and you fight. And then after that, you have the logged in users who can actually track their battle history over time to see their win and loss records. And then, of course, an admin has the ability to manipulate the affinities, the elements, just basically anything that we have in here. Right? And let's talk about the technology that we used. Our back end was built with Java as well with the MySQL database. Our front end was built with React using a bootstrap framework. Um, we actually pulled our monster images from a randomly generated image API called Pixel Encounters. And the big learning goal that we had that we wanted to do was making sure that things moved well with our uh with greensock animation that's an animation library that can be uh, applied to our front end and so throughout our project a lot a big thing was making things passively animate getting our various elements looking nice and moving and mo and moving along and let's talk about our achievements i mean i feel like the biggest one was um, I felt like we did a really good job of planning and ex and executing a long form collaborative project. It's our first time really doing that, really working with a team and spreading out uh, data. And I felt like we did a really good job with time management and made the process move very smoothly. Um, we're particularly proud of the animations that we did with GreenSock, as well as the various um, images and graphics and kind of our front end and how the theming and how everything looks, um, especially with Zach making our custom uh, um, aspects, our, only our monsters were pulled from API. Everything else uh, was built and animated from scratch, which is really cool. Um, and also kind of getting that deeper understanding of, um, of, our, of like containers. So we actually use both CSS, Grid, and Flexbox um, on, at different sites, mostly as a, as a learning. Uh, kind of little a little learning project kind of on the side just to kind of see hey like which one works better how do you kind of do this versus that um, so yes 
Uh, all right, well, enough time. I'm gonna actually walk you through our Monster Bash project here. Um, so this is the site that, this is the homepage landing plate page that you would land on. Uh, we have our Monster Bash animation along with the rules of our game, which I'm just gonna briefly go over again. I know Zach mentioned them at the beginning. Uh, you are going to choose a monster. Then your monster is going to fight a randomly generated monster from our database. All of your all monsters have an element, so both yours and the your enemy monster have an element that is affected by the location of the battle. So if the, your element, if your monster's element matches the location's element, that monster will get a boost. You are also going to choose a weapon for your monster to fight with, and that has an affinity that is associated with the weather of the battle. So again, if the affinity of the weapon matches the affinity of the weather, you get another boost. And what we're going to do then is we are going to calculate who is the winner based on all of the different calculations of your monster score, your equipment score, and the associated boosts depending on where the battle is taking place. Um, so Zach, my teammate, has graciously offered to be our kind of demo user here. Um, so I am going to start a battle here. And when you click start a battle, it brings you to our battle page where you are choosing a monster. We have 10 options to choose from in our menu here. Uh, and then you are also going to choose a weapon. Um, so Zach, which monster would you like to fight with today? I think I'm going to go with Dorothy. Okay, Dorothy is this monster right here that has an element of fire and a power of 75. So we're going to choose Dorothy. And then Zach and down, we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to choose your weapon here. So what weapon would you like to use? Well, Dorothy is a fire monster, right? So we probably want to pick something like a flame affinity, which means sec spear second degree burns, right? You can pick that one. That's definitely not, uh, it's not a bad choice. Remember though, that the element of your monster is associated with the location of the battle and the affinity of your weapon is associated with the weather. So yes, Dorothe is a fire monster and your weapon is a flame weapon, but those two correlations don't actually give you a bonus in your battle. Would you like to stay with this choice, Dorothe and the Spear of Second Degree Burns? I'm stubborn, yes. <laughs> okay, we're gonna roll with this then. Uh, as you click enter the arena, it is going to take you into our battle page here, which, demons, which uh, displays all of the variables associated with our battle. So you can see the weather for your battle today is sunshine, which is probably gonna help you since you chose that Spear of Second Degree Burns and that's a flame affinity. And your battle is taking place here in the mountains. Uh, that may not necessarily help your element of fire because they, those two will not sh most likely don't share an element together, um, but it's not gonna hurt you either. Your enemy monster is actually Vishnu. Oh, this is a lucky circumstance here that our two members that you're going against your teammate, Vishnu's uh, element is water and Vishnu is using the bow and arrow of dangerously icy road condition conditions, fitting that we are in Minnesota and that affinity is snow. Um, so we have sun. all of our, yes, so we have all of our elements laid out here. Um, Zach, are you ready to see if you're going to win or if you're going to lose? Yes. So we're going to click this see who won battle, and this is going to render some animations happening and also display who the winner is. So your monsters are going to cross paths. The loser goes down in defeat. Congratulations, Zach. You won this battle. You have slayed your enemy. Uh, the enemy's battle power is 122, and yours was 160 after we added in all of those bonuses. So you got quite a nice bonus here. Well done, Zach. Thank you, sir. Anything um, else that I can show you, Zach? Yes, actually. I was curious, is there a place where I could just see the monsters to, like, determine the most, I mean, the one that I would prefer to utilize in getting battles? Yep, so our view monsters page has all the monsters here. Uh, like I said, we have 10 built in so far. So if you just scroll up and down the page here, you can see all of them. Uh, gives you their name, the image of them, their element, and their power. So like you said, you can play around with them. You can test out each ones. The variables do change. So the weather and location and your enemy are all randomly generated. So even using the same monster over and over again with the same weapon will give you different results every time. Um, but, Zach, if you actually log in, we can keep track of those wins and losses and see which of your monsters are kind of giving you the best benefit. Um, so let's get you logged in here. What is your username? Uh, Zjeff, J-E-F-F, -F, uh, three. And your password? The most secure of all passwords. Password. Password, yes. Uh, I see that you have. you are very careful about security and want no one stealing your things. 
So oh, uh, a little typo password. there. Let's do that again. Password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. There we go. Uh, so Zach, when you log in with your user account, you can see your view user profile. Um, so you can see on your page here, hello, ZJEP3, uh, you have zero wins and one loss on your record so far. Uh, so that battle that we did before didn't count towards your uh, user account because you weren't logged in at the time. So let's do another battle. Let's get another login here for you. Uh, who would you like to use this time? I think I'm going to choose that devilishly handsome green thing on row three. <laughs> well, that would be the monster Zach. Yes, quite handsome. And which weapon would you like to equip Zach with? Honestly, uh, out of the selections, I think I like the sword of minor static electricity. It's got that the cool lightning. Sword, uh, oh, sorry, wrong run. The sword of minor static electricity. Okay, let's enter the arena. Uh, so, Zach, your element is Earth. You are taking place in the mountain, so you got a nice little boost there. Lucky you. Um, the weather is blizzard this time. Uh, you are fighting against Melina. So let's see who wins this time. Uh, congratulations, Zach. You won again. Melina falls down in defeat. You won. Your score was 138. Her score was 120. So it's a lot closer this time. I see. I was just curious. Is there some way to, like make a super powerful monster that will dominate the entire arena in most instances? Uh, for you as a user, you don't have the ability to add any elements to our databases. Um, I, however, have been blessed with admin privileges, so I am going to log in with my account here and my password. And I have a manage arena that will let me add or uh, basically do any adding, updating, deleting of all of the elements involved here. So within these elements, such and such. So if you wanted to add a monster, um, let's go ahead and add you some super powered monster here. What monster would you like to add? I think we'll have the Kraken. Okay, so we're gonna add the Kraken in here. Um, I am going to grab a link from our API to give your monster an image here. So I'm just gonna choose this one. And what would you like your power level of your monster to be? 300. Well, 300, that is going to have a little bit of an issue for you um, because it is a number choice that goes from 1 to 100. And if uh, you try to enter in 300, you are going to get a little error here. Your value must be less than or equal to 100. Um, so you want to make it as powerful as possible. Let's go with 99. Give somebody a fair chance. And it seems to make sense that the Kraken would be a water element. So we're going to make him a water element. And once we make him, now I can look in my database here. And now we have 11 monsters with my Kraken, with my bluish kind of thing. And he is a water monster. So you want to go fight with your Kraken? Yes. Let's go do a battle with the Kraken and see how it does. So we're going to choose Kraken as our monster. And Zach, which weapon or equipment would you like to equip your Kraken? I think that we should give him the mace of too many rocks so he can just flail it around. <laughs> okay, mace of too many rocks. So Kraken, mace of too many rocks. You, uh, Kraken is a water element, just like we assigned to him. Battle is taking place in the forest with the weather being a tornado and you're facing Judicile. Let's see one more time. And you win. You have quite the uh, high battle power here with 182 because we made our monster so strong and our enemy is only 122. Yes, true. Yes. So uh, I do like this Kraken, and I like the uh, look that he has. We're just going to edit him and make him a little more uh, even with everybody else. So I'm going to take him from a 99 and make him a 56. And we're going to update him here. And as you can see, uh, that he is updated. So let's go battle one more time. We're going to choose the same thing, the Kraken with the Mace of Too Many Rocks. And we're going to check out his battle power now. Um, so your water element is not going to help you in the mountains. Uh, you're actually facing my monster. Oh, okay. So I'm very hopeful that my monster will be able to defeat your Kraken. Let's see. All right. Well, you did win, but it was a lot closer this time. Your battle power is only 124 and your enemy was 116. So well done, Zach. You've created a Kraken that is going to defeat all of the monsters in the world, apparently. Yes. Finally. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that is our site here. Um, like, uh, like we said, you have all the CRUD updates available to an admin user, but a regular user has their view user profile page. 
uh, we are very proud of our uh, our project here and a lot of the things that we've done. Um, I think like everybody else, we faced some challenges along the way. Uh, the animations, which was our learning goal, was uh, a journey for us. It was a brand new thing that we had to teach ourselves. So there was a lot of YouTubes and a lot of web and websites there. Uh, Zach really took the lead on trying to get us a foundation and getting them rendering the way we wanted. Uh, dealing with Git merge issues, uh, James kind of alluded to this at the beginning. This is our first time working in a project, and I'm sure every group is going to say that it was uh, a learning process to make sure that we were learning, working on different things at different times and not overstepping each other. Experimenting with the CSS issues, uh, our website looks very cool, and Vishnu deserves a lot of praise for that, for working with the Flexbox and the grid containers and just seeing all of the different things possible for us. Um, and time management. This was the first project where we really kind of had our own freedom to choose what we wanted. So at the beginning, we were choosing what features we wanted in our battles, what was going to be able to make it to the final product and what is going to have to be put on the back burner to hopefully upgrade with it later. Um, and then just making sure that we are staying on top of it as the project was going. Uh, this was our largest project working on it for two weeks and we wanted to make sure we were keeping a good pace and making sure that we were focusing on the things that we wanted to make sure we were focusing on. Um, and that is what we have so far. For, so thank you all for listening. Um, and James, you can open us up for questions here. Yeah, thank you, Mike, Vishnu, and Zach. Uh, great job with your project and presentation. Uh, your your slides um, are just absolutely amazing looking. Um, and I also loved how you like leaned into that eight pixel design for the app itself, um, you know, and the consistency there. Uh, it, I gotta ask, is the raccoon like a bit of a mascot for your project? <laughs> uh, if you notice throughout the thing, there is a little, uh, the raccoon has a story here where he's adventuring, trying to find his food. Um, and then he eventually does on the last slide, get his <laughs> trash can of goodies. Yeah, that's <laughs> I've been reading about the history of Nintendo. So this is, this 8-bit pixel art is resonating with me very much this morning. So, um, that's one of our first questions, actually. Paul asks, who did the slides? I did the slides. Nice. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, those are great. Those are great. Uh, I mean, it kind of re re reminds me of really the last time I was an active uh, video gamer with uh, Donkey Kong and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, very, um, what's the word? Uh, I don't Retro? know. What is it? Retro? Nostal nostalgic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very much. Yeah. Uh, David, David comments, a uh, very anime uh, fight style. Uh, and then he asks, what font did you use for the site? I love the style. Um, I believe the font was, it was a free font uh, taken from online called Press Start, I believe. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. And there were a few others that we used. Yeah. Uh, but that was the main one. A very appropriately named font. Um, so Corbin asks, does Greensock play well with React? Surprisingly, so surprisingly well. Um, we, at first, it was tricky working with the renderings of the pages and the animations at the same time. Um, but we were able to get the, anim as you could see on that battle page, we had multiple animations happening all uh, one animation happened first and then two uh, animations happened kind of simultaneously. Um, so it did take a little bit of experimenting to work with, uh, but it, we did kind of figure out the methodology that it needs. Nice. Uh, David asks, is there a way for users to track their wins and losses? By authenticating and logging into the system, yes. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and finally, Britt says, wow, great job, team. What was your biggest aha moment when building this project? For me, it was seeing the animations like actually move. Because I'll be honest, I'm an older gentleman, and I thought that like, you know, stuff in positions was here. And then like you had to go as a developer, find an animator and figure that out. But finding this animation library and how it plays with React and all that was just seeing your monsters go from the corners to the, the ready position. It was very Kirby quick draw esque the way that we did it. And I was like, oh my God, this is so good. I'm a huge Kirby fan, sorry. So 
Um, another big aha moment, I think, for us as a group was when we finally got the battles correctly completed and and done. Uh, it took a lot of uh, fine tuning with randomly generating your enemy monster, your enemy equipment, your, your weather, your location, doing the calculations and doing the the advantages, disadvantages, and getting the winner displayed correctly. Uh, I would say that was probably the biggest amount of time of actually coding. And when there was a big sigh of relief when it was finally working. Excellent. Well, again, great job. Uh, really fun project and looks amazing. And uh, congrats on being done with the course. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.